I heard you broke up with Brad. Who are you gonna date now that you can date anyone? Why is this an immediate question to ask someone that just broke up? I understand that they're keenly curious about body stuff as evidenced in the following line. Penis in the foreskin kind of love. So yeah, Go figure out what you enjoy, I guess. But can we just let people take a longer than 12 second break between the end of one relationship and questions about the next? You can be single is what I'm saying. This highly questionable school art that is inspiring a love of microscopes, trophies, open flames, hookah, and magnetic floating chalices. I'm confused about my career path by simply glancing at it. Let's go, in and out, 20 minutes adventure. Title of my overambitious sex tape? In this shot, the fleet isn't concentrating their firepower on one location, but when we zoom in, the firepower seems to be aimed at this vulva's mass. Don't get me wrong, one should always concentrate on the vulva's mass, but be consistent. Why is their skin flapping around as the wind is pushing it back from the ship's trajectory? I get that G-forces do crazy things to your face, but for this amount of gum flappage, surely they'd have to be taking some bizarre route out of here, and not the straight line that we see in this shot. <laughs> Audio from the TV Sins writer's room after sending Game of Thrones final season somehow makes it into the episode. Th this was insane! That was pure luck! I was not in control of that situation at all! <laughs> Followed by Jeremy and Chris's reaction to the birth of CinemaSins also making its way into a Rick and Morty episode. Not closing all of your eyes when receiving a massage. You were right. Best day spa in the galaxy. Enjoying whatever this is with your grandfather. These things are just doing what they do in the wild. They love swallowing stressed out creatures for 20 minutes and then puking them up. I think cats feel this way about birds. Like it's their responsibility to end their stressful birdie lives, consume them, and then vomit them on my pillow at 3 a.m. as if it does anyone a favor. So this sin is for the unexpected visual memory barrage of my long gone Audubon obsessed cat, Oliver. F***ing Oliver. My whole body's like a baby's ass. Diapered and rashy? That makes no f***ing sense. Try swallowing the giant ball of snot that's dangling around in the back of your throat. It's disgusting. Says the man who for 90% of his day has more bodily fluids on his face than Jabba the Hutt's gynecologist. It's nice of you to let me off the hook. It's still unacceptable behavior and I do regret it. Rick is being extra nice because he's had all of his toxins removed, but that would seem to overlook that some of the most toxic people you will ever meet will carry themselves with a kind word and a smile. Yeah, take that. You came here for sex tape jokes and left with life facts, suckers. I'm real proud to be your grandpa, Morty. I guess this sin is on me for enjoying this wholesome moment while also realizing that the toxic elements of Rick and Morty are ripped from their consciousness. Do... do I prefer this show? Am I a... a sap trained by television to feel better when everyone gets along like puppets? Well, you were flapping your parasitic turd holster! Not specifying what the turd holster is, precisely. So I'm now unsure how to use it in situations requiring insult slinging. I discovered the toxic equivalent of electricity, Morty. <laughs> I love the idea that there's a toxic version of electricity, even if it doesn't make any sense. I mean, would lightning just deliberately pick out the nicest people to strike? Would a power surge wait until you've nearly finished a big project to short out your computer and then do exactly the same thing to your brand new computer just to f with you? Wait, toxic electricity may already be a thing. Now, who can tell me the common denominator of these two fractions? You don't know or you're just bored. False dichotomies. With the kids' clothing variety as your only clue, you'll never discover the mystery of the current weather pattern in the neighborhood. If we're all bored over here, wouldn't the common denominator be you? We learn that it's only the character traits the individual believes are toxic that have been removed. But I still struggle to believe that Morty doesn't think being a back-talking smartass to his teacher doesn't fall into the realm of toxicity. I do, however, know that I have a pretty bad case of haven't taken you to dinner-itis. This works. Oh, sh**. The item on the wall wasn't art at all, it was an actual trophy case? Well, in that case, I will remove a sin, because I called it art. And then add a sin back, because it looks like the rest of the trophy case is further down the hallway, but we saw much more of it from a different angle earlier. I think I know what to do. Morty! Holy sh**. What was that foam made out of that it made it so easy for Morty to snap it in half? Oh. I'll have a water. But, but you already have wine. So wouldn't the drink order have already been taken? Or is that the previous table's wine? But why is there wine at the empty tables? What is this restaurant? Look, this is Rick and Morty land, so I'm gonna gloss over the fact that these two 14 year olds are having a first date at this fancy restaurant instead of a f***ing arcade or something. But I refuse to believe that this teenager would leave the house with little to no battery on their phone. That is a step too far, people. 
Hey, Rick, are you familiar with Benoit technology? The assholes behind Rick and Morty continue to make me drop the ball when it comes to resisting the urge to fall into the annals of the internet just for the sake of making sure I understand the whole joke they're making. They're all the bad parts of us, which, by the way, includes our dishonesty. But dishonesty can have positive uses, though. An abundance of honesty can lead to feeling like you have to fill in the comment sections of the internet with all the reasons you hate something, instead of letting people enjoy the things they love. You know, just as a totally random example. No! Is it wrong if I think this is kind of hot? Watching an elder person force a younger person to toxify themselves in a garage experiment? Has Rick and Morty asked us to contemplate morals a bit too far this time? Eh, probably. Did I ask for this, huh? Did I? Assessing threat to groin. What uses a defensive groin laser if it only deploys after multiple hits to the vegetables have been received? Look, either this door frame is made of cardboard or Rick's body is made of titanium. And yes, in this world, either could be true. But if I stopped sending stuff because it could be true, these Rick and Morty videos would be about five seconds long. Carpet so weak it tears by hand. Or hand so strong they tear carpet. Either way, it's a sin. Taping the horse head to the exterior of the frame rather than opening up the frame to subtly attach it to the photo directly. It's pretty disgusting, so you'll have to believe me when I say they forgot to put Rick's dismembered and eviscerated body in this panel. The monster's ripping a spine tube thing out of the center of the floor with no Rick, and then suddenly there's a Rick. <laughs> the random bowl of fruit on the bottom of the table survives this. What did the booger version of you mean when he said he was going to make the whole world toxic? Oh, I'm sure he just left that as a clue so Rick would know where to find him once he figures out how to recombine them both into one being. Villains are super helpful like that. It must be by the individual's own definition of toxicity. The best thing about this episode is that it doesn't just assume that all's well once the things that you believe are toxic about you have been removed. We can all be toxic in ways that we're totally unaware of, and it all comes down to perspective. Damn you, Rick and Morty, for once again having more self-awareness and insight than any cartoon about a belching scientist has any right to be. This moon tower, Morty, <coughs> is the perfect height and metallic composition for the <coughs> amplification and beaming of toxic energies. Convenient tower fitting the exact requirements of the villain's plan is very convenient. Kids. This stock is a beautiful redhead, recently single, not looking to date, but ready to fall in love. Creators of the show went to the extra effort of animating this apple, in case this Jordan Belmort impression didn't quite hit all the asshole notes on its own. Is this organic? Mm. Yes, proclaiming the organicness of your food is pointless, but it isn't Morty chopping this carrot while neither moving the knife onto the carrot or the carrot into the knife levels of pointless. Hey. Did you ever want to hold a Terry fold? Thinking that playing a whimsical song will make me hang around for the entirety of the cri- Wait, what the hell is a Terry fold? Why does it make me think of dinosaurs? Is this like a sexy dinosaurs song? How did dinosaurs have sex? <laughs> I suppose carefully is the obvious answer. Wait, is that the end of the credits? Damn it! Peter, this- this, this is a detox clinic. You can't vacation here. Let's go. In and out. 20 minutes adventure. Four to six days later. Hey, uh, you mind if I put on some music? Not at all. Bird's a word, a bird, 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 bird. The bird is a word, a bird, bird, bird. Hey, Morty, remember yesterday when I couldn't play the trombone? Well, check this out. It's not, not quite my tempo. What's a knockout like you doing in a computer-generated gin joint like this? Woohoo! I'm out of my awkward state. John, one thing I can promise you, even in this market, is that I never ask my clients to judge me on my winners. I ask them to judge me on my losers because I have so few. 